Welcome to Electra Online. Well, you may have wondered what all the different petroleum products are and where they come from. And of course, they come from the fracking process where they take crude oil and they break it down into its individual constituents. And also we have what we call natural gas that we get from the ground. And what does it contain? Well, starting with the gas products, methane and ethane is what makes up natural gas. So what you cook with, uh, what you heat, uh, what, you have, what you use for heating and so forth, for your, for your dryer, if it works on natural gas, it's usually methane and ethane combination that you use uh, for cooking and so forth. Then if it's propane and butane, that means we have now two additional carbons instead of one or two, and I have three or four, well, we end up with something that under pressure becomes a liquid, and when you let the pressure off, it comes a gas. Propane is used for a lot of cooking. They come and fill your propane tank. When they pressurize enough, it's actually liquid. Once it comes out, then it's no longer pressure. It comes out as a gas. Same with butane. Butane. Uh, that's something we use in cigarette lighters and so yeah as soon as you push a button and it comes out there's a liquid in there in the lighter but as soon as the pressure is off it turns into a gas and you can then light it and it then uh, has a flame we call that LPG that calls liquid petroleum gas so under enough pressure becomes a liquid when you let it go it turns back into a gas then we have the next three propane hexane and heptane well, they're called their petroleum ether. So some, somewhere between LPG and it begins to turn into something we can use for gasoline. Now, you probably recognize this octane. And whenever you go to the gasoline pump, you can choose between 87, 89 or 91 octane. In some places it goes down to 86 and 85. Well, it's the percentage of how much of the octane you have in your gasoline. We'll do another video that gives you a little bit more information about what makes up gasoline, what contributes to gasoline, and what the differences are between the different components in the gasoline. Typically speaking, that the higher you go, the more flammable, flammable it is, the lower you go, the less flammable it is. But gasoline tends to contain quite a few of the different compounds like this. Then when we go below that, we get, end up with what we call kerosene. Now remember, my grandparents had a kerosene lamp in the bathroom outside. The shower was kind of in a, in a stall outside. It was pretty cold in the wintertime, and so they would put a kerosene lamp in there, light it, and they would then provide the heat from that. Now, kerosene, notice, is below gasoline, so it's not as flammable and not as dangerous to use in the home as you would if you had gasoline. Then if you go further down, notice we now end up in the what we call the diesel fuel range. And diesel fuel will ignite at much higher temperatures. And so that's why we use it in diesel trucks and diesel engines, because those are much more efficient because they need to run at higher temperatures in order to combust diesel, diesel fuel as opposed to gasoline. Notice if you go all the way down to C17, C18, that's hepta decade and octa decade. Then we have what we call the lubrication oil. So if you want oil in your engine, you can see that these are much, uh, they have much longer chains, they're not as flammable, and so they can be used for lubrication. If you then go beyond that, we, we end up with something called petrolatum. And what petrolatum is, it's something that's used to produ produce wax and asphalt. Those are the very heavy components that end up at the bottom of all the fracking process. Of course, paraffin wax, that can be used for candles or wax paper, asphalt. Well, everyone knows what asphalt is. That's what we drive our cars on. It's an amazing invention. And yes, it comes from a byproduct of the petroleum that we then crack and turn into the various components. That's essentially the waste product that we use for asphalt. Now, notice since, uh, since fuel, uh, petroleum, is becoming much more expensive, even all of the byproducts, including the asphalt, are becoming much more expensive. So now when we start building roads with the high cost of, of uh, fuel, high cost of petroleum, well, we're going to have a very high cost of asphalt as well. So don't count on uh, your government fixing the roads up anytime soon because now it's gotten to be a lot more expensive. But at least you can see now how the various types of compounds that we have starting from the lighter methane, ethane, and propane gases, butane gas now becomes, when we get into the hexane and heptane, we now get into what we call liquid at room temperature, and that turns into fuel like gasoline. You go further down, you have kerosene, diesel fuel, and the very heavy byproducts that we still use for whatever we can use it for. So there you go. That is a good over overview of the kind of products you get, petroleum products, from the different pr cracking processes where we take 
crude oil that has all the various compounds in it and we break it into these specific components that we can then utilize for what we utilize for. And that is the summary of petroleum products. What's jet fuel? I, jet fuel. Jet fuel, I believe, is in the upper range of the gasoline. <clears throat> so I think it's a little bit higher up here than it is for gasoline. But I have to go back and check to see if that's the correct answer or not. What about rocket fuel? <laughs> rocket fuel is very different. Rocket fuel is primarily oxygen, um, liquid oxygen that's very flammable. They want something that's extremely flammable so you can put out an enormous amount of heat and, and get that rocket up into space. So yeah, they don't use these kind of fuels at all for rocket. It would never get up there. Much more combustible oxygen is one of the primary fuels there. So it's a bomb? It's a, it's a controlled bomb, controlled explosion essentially. Yeah. Well, we uh, just discovered by going back and looking up uh, what uh, gas... Hmm? <laughs> All right, I'll take that back. My wife went and looked it up and we discovered that um, jet fuel is actually in the lower range of the gasoline, so the bottom part of gasoline and into the kerosene range. So that means that jet fuel is less flammable than gasoline, which is interesting. Uh, why would that be? Well, probably for safety. You want things that are less flammable more flammable is danger, dangerous, less flammable is less dangerous. So for some reason jet fuel is made out of the chemical compounds that are lower in the range of gasoline and into the kerosene range. So, so that's the correction from what I thought. I thought gasoline was a little bit, uh, uh, jet fuel was a little bit more flammable, but it's not. For safety practices, it's uh, less flammable and lower on the scale, the bottom half of gasoline and into the kerosene range. So there's the correction. It's 30% 30% kerosene and about 70% gasoline, okay. But they said it's not because of the flammability, because it's just it's jet fuel, they said to use it for lower freezing point. Wow, lower freezing point. Freezing point. It goes down to minus 76 F and minus 60 C. Before it begins to freeze. Okay, let's see here, freezing point, how does it make sense? Freezing. So you have a lower freezing point. Well, matter of fact, that will be on our next video. Well, let's, let's kind of visit the various types of uh, petroleum products, what their melting point is and what their freezing point is. So that should be interesting. So let's, let's take a closer look at that. That's, that's a good point. All right.